Good afternoon. We're going to start on the preview for tomorrow. Bianca, kick things off. Can I just ask a quick? Can I just ask a quick question about what, what we've yep, just heard? Yeah, please do. Yeah. Um, Chelsea becoming the first sports team to adopt the IHRA anti-Semitism definition. Frank, how important do you think this is for Chelsea, and what impact do you think it will make? I think it's an important statement. Um, we hope it makes a, an impact. That's the whole point. Um, I think Bruce, Lord Mann and Dr Meyer spoke very well about it and they know much more detail than me but in simple terms as manager of the football club I uh, am I'm proud that the club makes such a strong stance against any form of discrimination um, and uh, will be active in that going forward which I think today shows sometimes actions, words are very easy, actions another thing and uh, we've always been very strong on that and will continue to do so. Great. I just want to ask you quickly about Rhys James as well. He's just signed mm. uh, his new contract, five and a half years. Talk to me about how highly you rate him and how important it was to get him to sign this deal. I rate him very highly. Um, I um, knew him as a youth player in the academy here. Um, I saw him on loan last year, do fantastically well at Wigan. Uh, tried to get him to Derby, he didn't, couldn't come in, in mid-season, so, but I admired him a lot and then to work with him I feel the same and even more so. He's, he's got his foot into the first team and, uh, and I think there's a lot more to come from Reese James. Really talented player, like a lot of the, uh, the younger players, not just the younger players, but to, to sort of focus on, on them. He wants to learn, he wants to improve, he wants to train, he wants to do the right things and he has that talent, so great for the club that he's uh, signed for so long. In terms of transfers, we've just heard Bruce say that he knows who's coming in. That was a joke. <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 that was a joke. I'm taking him seriously. <laughs> yeah. there, is, there is nothing imminent. There aren't, there aren't people waiting in the wings that, that I don't know about, you don't know about. So um, there is no news on that front. And there's still speculation about Moussa Dembele and Boubacari Samare. Is there nothing that you can tell us about those potentially? No, there's not. And I won't talk any about any, any individuals. Um, and there, there is nothing, as I say, I mean, they're not going to walk through the door, so I don't, I'm not embarrassed that it's going to be seen as a, something dishonest very soon. It's not. Um, so um, what is, remains the same is that the window is open and if there's anything we can do to, to improve us, um, then we will attempt to do it. And we're very open and, uh, and working on that one. But I'm also very aware of how... I want the squad to be and how much we must focus on what is our job in hand here in the building which is of, of even more importance in the short term um, and that's to focus on Newcastle um, coming up tomorrow so we'll keep working while the windows open there may be news as I say I'm not um, closing the door as such because I'll always want to improve us but it has to be right in January. In terms of the players that you still have and that could potentially be leaving the likes of William, uh, Giroud, I think Ross Barkley as well as there's been talk. David Moyes certainly didn't rule that out, about getting him on loan. Is there anyone that's going to be leaving Chelsea? There's no talk uh, here of Ross Barkley going anywhere. Um, he's our player. Uh, he's played the last couple of games and done very well. In cert certain circumstances, while Ross hasn't as featured as much this year, but I've got a lot of faith in Ross. Um, so that was just news that I heard like everybody else this week and I'm not, absolutely no feeling uh, towards it. I'm very happy with him. Um, Olivier Giroud, I think we know that there, there may be something that could happen. Um, the good thing about Oli is that he's so experienced and uh, I have a really good relationship with him as does the club. So again, if all circumstances are right, that may happen, but it's not. So whilst it's not, he's our player. Um, and William is not going anywhere. We know his contract is up at the end of the season. He's in conversations with the club, which is still ongoing. Um, and there's no news on that, but he's certainly our player now. Okay, I'll stop annoying. Last one, Bianca, <laughs> yeah. please. Um, Let yeah, me got to move is, on. This is about Last one. Newcastle. Mm. Um, your away form's been strong. It's kept you in touch. You can now potentially go eight points clear of Manchester United with a win. Um, it's a real opportunity, isn't it, to do that and to consolidate your position? It is an opportunity, um, but um, every game in the Premier League remains as vital, and this is like you know the same as all the others. And even though we have good away form in general, every game brings new challenges. And going to Newcastle, I know it as a player, I know it now, the emotion of the crowd, the support of the home crowd, the very organised team that they are, the manager that they have, and also the threats that they have where they've got some really good results this season. So we'll be taking nothing 
uh, lightly and uh, expecting anything because of our away record or anything. We have to take this game head on as we have to do in these games coming up now because it's um, massively important that we keep our focus game in, game out. And we, we do, certainly do not underestimate Newcastle. They, you, you shouldn't do because of the season they're having. Okay, thank you. Moose. Having said that, to use a phrase that you'll be well aware of from your uncle, they are down to the bare bones in terms of players mm. and not of injuries. Is this a good time to play them? Um, no, because you know Bournemouth were relatively down to the bare bones and we played them and lost. This is the Premier League. I think the, the bare bones itself can bring out a different feeling in a team, in a stadium, in players. And I think um, I think the way Steve Bruce has handled this season shows. And you know people expect them to have a lot of difficulties this season. And I think they've uh, fought against that and done very well. So I, I don't. Um, I don't look at the bare bones. I also understand that some of their players may be coming back for this game. It's a bit of a tough one to, for us to approach in a way because there's some individuals that may or may not play influential players for them. So I'm not, not considering that side of it. How much of a pivotal weekend is this? Because not many would expect Manchester United to win at Liverpool. It could happen, but it's, no one's beaten them yet this season. And yet you are expected to win at Newcastle. So you could open up a sizable gap on everybody else in that battle for top four. Yeah, but they're all ifs, aren't they? You know, and um, that's one part of that we can control, which is us at Newcastle. So we have to give everything and uh, try and um, get a result because there have been moments recently where we could have got results that would have made us look more secure in fourth place, and we haven't. So we must try and learn from that. And on the same side, you look at Manchester United, nobody would have fancied them to go to Manchester City and win in the league. They did that. So I won't expect anything. What I want us to do is try and win our game and then we can actually see what happens with the, the rest of the weekend. The debate's already started about who will start for England in the summer because it looks like Harry might, might miss the, the Euros completely. Would you agree that Tammy's in pole position for that right now, with the form he's shown and the fact he's already scored and played for England this season? Only Gareth can tell you that. Um, from my point of view, I look at it generally and with England and the competitive nature of the squads and uh, and how it goes on form and how you plan for the club. You should never jump forward a few months and, and say anything or expect anything. I love what Tammy's done this year. We all know that. I speak about him most weeks here. Yeah. Um, and it, the way he's playing at the minute, of course, he's hugely in contention for that. But he has to sustain that performance and, and, and obviously hopefully improve it. And just one more. We're hearing this morning that possibly referees and the way they deal with VAR will change this weekend. And they're actually going to go and use the monitors. Do you see that as being a positive? What's the result going to be? <laughs> I mean, it's one of those. I think, I think it is. I think it is. Um, I understand the intensity of match day and uh, that there are some um, things on the referee's side that, that, you may, uh, that there may be concerns with it. But I think where we, at, where we are at with VAR, we all seem to have some doubts. And let's keep some power in the referee's hand on pitch. Um, and I think we may get better results. So, yeah, we'll see. John? Frank, on the, the race for the top four, do you think it will be the usual suspects or do you think Sheffield United and Wolves can actually maintain what they've so far done and kind of push it? Yeah, of course they can. You know, I, 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 don't, I don't think the Premier League, the usual suspects one works so well because the landscape's changed a lot. Um, a lot of teams have either invested money, invested wisely, improved. Mm. Uh, bringing something different to the table. The, the league is so competitive this year. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm, I'm certainly not looking. I don't think you should look with a prejudgment on any <laughs> club or team. I think if they're challenging for top four and they can stay in the race, then they'll all believe. And on the, on the transfer window, how important is it to get some players in, or is it, is it not? Is it not an issue if you don't manage to do it? I think it will, you know, as I say from my point of view, and as I say, I'm not going to be absolutely open about it here because nothing's done yet, but from my point of view, if we can improve us, or as I see it, then that will be important. But at the same time, if I go striving for that and, uh, and lose the balance of what we've got already, then, then I won't do that. But whatever happens, whether we bring in uh, A player, players or no players, the fight for top four is going to be really tough. It's going to be really tough all the way to the end of the season because we couldn't do business in the window. We know there's a transition element to this year and we know that we've had some inconsistencies here which we're working against. But And there are other teams around us that have got lots of, of power and weapons that can win them a big run of games. So it's going to be tough no matter what, but we must just focus on ourselves, I suppose. On the injuries, um, there was talk that Christian Pulisic is making quicker progress. Is that, is that right? 
Uh, no, um, but I don't know what kind of uh, rate you were expecting or what. So a couple of weeks, a couple of weeks yeah, we'd like to think so, which kind of goes towards the, the break for us at the start of February, which might fall at a nice time because it might give us a little bit more to play with and hopefully he'll be back the other end of, of that break. But he's kind of in line with how we expect him to be. I know we ask about Ruben every week, but it, is, he take, is it taking longer than you Well, I can actually answer you better this week, which is, which is <laughs> nice for all of us, I'm, I'm sure. But he's actually training now with the... Uh, with the under 16s, we're training with the under 18s, progression to the under 23s in, in, in pretty short space of time. And the sooner he can be back with us training, the better. But obviously, we train at a, a, a real intensity, and the injury, him being out for a long time, is very standard that you, you bring him through the, the, some of the academy years. Um, and we're working in every way, but there, you, there's a different look on Ruben's face, more smiley and, uh, and happy, which I absolutely understand. He I'm looks fit. Tough. Tough, yeah, tough. Um, and he's not one that, the good thing is about him, he's not one that's walked around with his head down or creating a neg negative atmosphere, but it's just a lonely place and that's for everybody. But yeah, he's um, integrating more towards us now, which is great news for all of us because, you know, the player that he is, the lad that he is, I think he can be easily forgotten from the outside that we've missed a hugely influential player for us. Um, and hopefully we'll get him back over the, as I say, if he can be training with us after the, the break, um, it might still need some competitive games for him because of the nature of the injury, but he might not be far away. Okay, cameras off, please.